Good morning. This is the Master Builder Show, sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. I am your host, Jim Gibson, president of the Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, a registered builder in the state of Texas, and a graduate master builder certified by the National Association of Home Builders. Today's topic is going to be structured wiring. My guests today are Tim Rowe with Alamo Electrical uh, Contracting Services and my wife, Jean Gibson, vice president of Gibson Home Builders. Alamo Electric's uh, contact numbers are 817-249-4964, and their fax is 817-249-4984. They're located just outside of Parker County here, located at 9508 Camp Bowie West in Fort Worth. Good morning, Tim. How are you? Good morning, Jim. All right, Jean. Hi, honey. It's my turn. Yeah, you got something to say. Yeah, I've always got something to say. I Um, I mentioned CASA before, and I'm finally getting my act together with all my notes. CASA, the Court-Appointed Special Advocates of Parker County, is a not-for-profit agency that uses volunteers to advocate in court for children who have been abused and neglected. Seven Parker County home builders have come together for a very special fundraising event, CASAs for CASA 2008. The builders are constructing unique, custom-designed playhouses for CASA. Area residents will have the opportunity to donate to CASA, and a winner for each house, playhouse, will be chosen from the tickets submitted. The playhouses will be on display at the Super Save Grocery Store on South Main Street, Highway 51. You know where they are. Right. In Weatherford, beginning Saturday, April the 12th. So you better hurry up and get your house yeah, built. I it. I've got it drawn up. <laughs> <Not in. laughs> They're going to be dis- on display, and we're going to set up a village out there. And they'll be on display until Saturday, April the 26th. And ticket sales will be daily from 10 to 6 p.m. On Saturday, April the 26th at 11 a.m., the names of all the Playhouse winners will be drawn. And there are going to be a fun event for the whole family throughout the day. There's going to be, well, it's, it's from 11 to 1 is the drawing and tours of the Playhouses. The kids come over and play in them oh, anyway. Yeah, they did last and year. there'll be music and food and just some neat stuff going on. So we're asking everybody to come on out. And this is very definitely a grandma and grandpa event, too, to get a playhouse for their grandchildren. That's if where grandma anybody and grandpa has, spend all their money on the tickets, isn't it? Well, this, you're the grandpa who's going to build the house, baby. Oh, I know. <laughs> but if you have any questions, you can call me, Jean Gibson, 817-269-0038. And I'll be glad to help you out. But you're going to be hearing a whole lot more about this one. And everybody remembers last year we were down at Lowe's, and there were three houses, and it was just a fun event. It's really neat. And some little kids. I don't even know who's got them. I'd love the people that got the houses from last year, if they want to give me a buzz and let me know how the houses are doing and where they are. See if they're still still in shape, huh? Yeah, I'm not volunteering to go over and touch them up. (laughs) Right. (laughs) All right. It's, uh, if y'all need to check out any builders or remodeling, uh, remodelers, you can go online to www.masterbuildershow.com and you click on, uh, it'll take you to my main website. You click on TRCC, which is the Texas Residential Construction Commission, and you can check out and make sure builders are registered and all that. And like I said, today we're going to be talking about structured wiring. And if y'all have any questions for us, you can call us at 877-341-8950. That's 877-341-8950. All right, we're going to talk about structured wiring to start with. Tim, you want to tell us a little bit about structured wiring? Sure. Uh, structured wiring just basically incorporates uh, any of the low-voltage wiring going to uh, the various components throughout your home. Um, basically, what you're trying to do is uh, uh, control your, your uh, input for your, for your television signals and your telecommunications, and, and it gives you the ability, uh, depending on what your, your overall objective is, to, um, to automate your, everything uh, throughout your home, uh, whether you're talking about your security system or you can have uh, cameras incorporated into your, your, uh, your security system or, or your uh, HVAC, uh, uh, audio, video. Just about uh, anything that you want. Pretty much do. anything you can think of we can do with uh, structured wiring. But it's not electric lights. That's not what we're talking about. Uh, well, you can control the electrical lighting with the low-voltage uh, 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 automation also it's, with the structured wiring. It's, contr- it's not running the lights, though. It's, it's not powering the lights, but uh, what we typically install is a Cat5-based uh, uh, lighting control system. Oh, and that uh, means? And th- that what that means is that it, it's incorporated into your overall structured wiring uh, uh, system so that 
the same type of conductor or wiring that's used to uh, control your phones or your computers or process data to your to your computers or transmit the uh, voice signals to your phones is also capable of uh, sending the data to uh, lighting controls throughout your home to control uh, the intensity of your lights via dimmers or to turn them on or off or you can set them up to be timed or and the same type of system can also be used to send video signal for for security cameras or digital video recorders if you want to if you want to be able to go back and record what's actually going on to your at your home during the day. Yeah, the reason they call it structured wiring is because it is an organized fashion to run all the wires. Back in the older day, you know, when we just had telephones and TVs, they just run maybe the telephone into a central location. And then, you know, when the kids got bigger, you got them an additional line. So you ran another line maybe into their bedroom and stuff. But now it's got to where everybody's got a computer and just about everybody's got a TV in their bedroom. And so what they did, they they put in like a centralized location that you run all these things back to and you have a control panel. And so it's it's a, it's an organized fashion. Instead of just putting one line here and one line there, you actually bundle the wiring, and you're taking several. You're taking your TVs, your phones, your your data lines, and your communication system. You know, for everything mm-hmm. into each particular room that you want to control. Well, that was the first discussion we had. Was you said why is it called structured wiring? And I figured because it was inside the walls, not outside, so it was part of the structure. But, but it's actually but it's, it's actually an organized. The yeah, well, it's 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 an. It organized took him an to hour bring. to come up with a word other than structure to yeah. define structure. <laughs> it's, it's it's the wires <laughs> is structured, uh, and and it's not in. Well, it is in the structure, but it's actually a structure to the organ or the organization. So it's not the it's not the electrical wiring for the whole house and the oven and all the lights. It's everything that controls all those things. Right. Exactly. And we've okay. got to take a break. We'll be back here in just a couple of minutes. Did you know that some of the best home builders in the entire nation are right here in Parker County? Hello, everyone. This is Lynn Bearden, president of First National Bank of Weatherford. Our lenders believe your family deserves the best when it comes to your dream home. First National Bank is proud to support the Master Builder Show on QXFM. First National Bank in Weatherford has been building homes in Parker County since 1880. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. YourCircleOfWealth.com, a recent study by one of the world's largest financial institutions, estimates that over 90% of baby boomers will not retire financially independent. We have prepared a financial report entitled Your Circle of Wealth. Learn how changing the way you manage your money can dramatically increase your wealth. To get a copy, you may go to www.YourCircleOfWealth.com and enter the passcode Gibson. G-I-B-S-O-N. That's YourCircleOfWealth.com. Fort Worth Lighting, serving Parker Wise, Palo Pinto, and surrounding counties with a selection of interior and exterior lighting fixtures. They also have ceiling fans, mirrors, and vanities in all sizes. A lighting consultant will help you with your decisions. For an appointment with a Fort Worth Lighting Consultant, the number is 817-597-6320 or the website is FortWorthLighting.com. 817-597-6320 for Fort Worth Lighting. North Texas Basements. 817-770-2768. With over 30 years of experience in residential construction, add extra living area, storm protection, and extra room that will be easy to heat and cool without needing a large piece of ground to build on. Think about having a basement in your next home. North Texas Basements, 817-770-BSMT or 817-770-2768. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, 2401 Zion Hill Road, Weatherford, Texas, 682-429-2116. We specialize in homes to suit each and every individual that expects special attention. We help design, finance, and close on every home we build. We use green building techniques in all of our homes. You can contact Jim at masterbuildershow.com. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, Weatherford, 682-429-2116. Welcome back to the Master Builder Show. I'm your host, Jim Gibson. My guests today are Tim Rowe with uh, Alamo Electrical Contracting Services, my wife, Jean Gibson. Uh, and today's show is sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. We're talking about structured wiring. We're probably going to be talking about several different types of structured wiring and wiring, I guess, in general. But uh, tell us, what what now are we looking for uh 
in structured wiring as far as what do you put in most homes? Well, uh, in the majority of homes, uh, standard, you're looking at uh, uh, just your, your Cat5e, which is basically Cat5 enhanced based wiring uh, uh, submitted in through the home, which basically means you have the ability to run data or, or, or phone through the same uh, what wiring. What does Cat5 mean? Cat5, that's a, a, a four-pair uh, conductor wiring. Um, and what it is, it's it's just the wiring that you use to plug your phone into uh, and the wiring you use to plug your, your, your data into as far as computer systems. So that's a standard. Well, that's a standard. The, the, yeah. the, the, like in the old days, the uh, the uh, telephone wire they put in the house, it was standard twisted pair, and the twisted pair is to cut down on inductive reactants, and that is bleed over and you stuff. You see why and, I don't understand yeah. this stuff? Well, anyway, <laughs> CAD5 has a, number, uh, a, a larger number of twists. Uh-huh. Per wire, if you look at a Cat Five versus the old wire, uh, the old wire kind of went around maybe one turn every inch, inch and a half. Well, Cat Five, what, uh, cat, it's Category Five or Cat Five, C A T Five, and uh, what they've done, they've increased the number of twists per inch. So it may have what eight or ten twists right. per inch, and what that does, like I said, it cuts down. You have induction between two wires; they're running parallel. And so you have bleed over from one pair to another and causes crosstalk, what they call crosstalk or, or in, in, interference with your signal. And this, this, and, uh, the twist actually counteract the induction across the wires and bleed over so you have a clear, more concise signal. All right, you're running, what, two cat fives normally to each room now? It, uh, yeah, typically uh, one for one for telephone and then, uh, uh, for each one of the, one of your bedrooms, and especially for your living room areas, or or anywhere else you're going to want a TV, uh, modern t- television systems, uh, you're typically going to be using a uh, uh, either a cable or a satellite dish input for mm-hmm. your TV, and we run a couple of RG6, which is just ba- basically uh, cable TV wire coax. What's, coax. Um, what's high definition going to do to you? Uh, well, high definition. Uh, there's lots of different definitions for high definition there's there's uh uh variable uh uh, uh standards for high mm-hmm. definition one of them is the resolution state uh, uh, status and what that the top resolution typically out on this for the standards today is called 1080p and 1080p is the the re- lines of resolution on your television screen mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that's that's the highest. Now, you're going to have a hard time getting a broadcaster to broadcast in 1080p. Usually they broadcast in 720. Uh, but with the new uh, uh, technology that's come out uh, that you can mm-hmm. go down to your local uh, 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 electronic store and purchase with the new Blu-ray systems that have come out and uh, uh, other DVD software, uh, you can achieve 1080p, which is the highest of the high definition, inside your own home. And, uh, on this old wiring, on the older, you don't you don't need something greater than CAD five for high definition for greater resolution. Actually, uh, it's actually uh, transmitted over the RG six, which is your cable TV wiring. Uh, it's the coax cable. Oh, okay. Um, and uh, uh, the CAT five is usually uh, uh, run in conjunction with the RG six, so that you can uh, download movies uh, from the from your satellite provider or mm-hmm. your cable provider, and you can uh, communicate with your uh, with your provider, or the the set top box will communicate with your provider, um, and uh, you're you're going to want to pre-wire for that in in almost any case to make sure that you have the capability of of doing that without having to go in after the fact. Are you saying that you have to for high definition, which is a refined compressed signal, right? Uh, it, it's it's a there's more data in right, that stream. There's more data in that stream, exactly. And you're saying that to have to maximize that, you have to have different kind of wiring, or you can enhance the CAD five that's in my in my walls. Well, now. we're going to use the same type of wiring. You're going to change. They're going to change broadcast signals to an H, uh, HD format. Therefore, uh, you're actually going to have to have a different TV. The wiring is going to remain the same right now. Uh, they're not going to go in and rewire every house. I mean, that would be virtually impossible. Uh, but you are going to have to, I forget what date, you're going to have to have an HD TV or an HD TV rece- receiver uh, to convert it to the HD signal. Yeah, most of the uh, satellite providers or cable providers already have the ability to, to convert the HD signal to your normal TV signal. 
Um, so that's that's not going to affect most consumers. Uh, the a- HD receiver is something that's going to be uh, affecting people who use just regular antennas. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and my understanding is the uh, 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 the government's going to be providing a FCC is going to be providing a, a HD a TV receiver for antenna, just regular aerial antenna for people who requested up to a certain date. But I don't have all the information on that. But yeah. what was the whole point of HD? Higher definition TV. I mean, more clarity. Just like when they, in old days we had AM radio and then they went to FM radio, which was was a, a better signal. So you can you a can actually see, you can actually see the difference. Uh, yeah, actually, I can see the difference. Okay. It depends on uh, 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 the TV that you're viewing it on. But mm-hmm. if you watch HD TV with an HD TV receiver on an old TV, you're not going to see any significant difference. If you watch HD TV with a with a newer television LCD or plasma TV that's rated for 1080p, and the signal's coming in at 1080p, which is about the highest resolution you're going to see on HD uh, uh, in typical settings. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to see you're going to see a significant difference. Yeah, the yeah, the commerce structured wiring is called two plus two structure right now, and what they're doing they're running two CAD fives uh, into a room along with two RG six coax cables. And uh, the reason they run the two coax is because you got one for upstream data and one for downstream data, and you don't uh, I guess broadcast simultaneously over one wire because you have to kind of wait. Mm-hmm. Between two mm-hmm. and your and the uh, the the Cat Five is is able to take up to about a hundred megabits per second uh, is high speed right now and I know we got a lot of computers that are going into gigs now and they've got some new cables coming out and called the HDMI cable uh, HDMI stands for high definition multimedia interface type cables and those cables. It looks like we've got to take another break. We'll be back here and talk about this in a few minutes. Did you know that some of the best home builders in the entire nation are right here in Parker County? Hello, everyone. This is Lynn Bearden, president of First National Bank of Weatherford. Our lenders believe your family deserves the best when it comes to your dream home. First National Bank is proud to support the Master Builder Show on QXFM. First National Bank in Weatherford has been building homes in Parker County since 1880. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Are you having a construction-related issue? Do you need a construction attorney? If so, you may call the law firm of Kelly M. Davis & Associates. Kelly's background in the construction industry has led to her focus in construction litigation. With over nine years of experience practicing construction law in and around the metro area, for more information, you may visit www.kmdalegal.com or you may call 972 434-8009. That's 972-434-8009. Alamo Appliance, 100 South Riverside Drive in Fort Worth, has been dedicated to serving your needs in kitchen appliances for over 35 years. They offer Gen Air, KitchenAid, Whirlpool, Maytag, Amana, and many others. Their experienced sales staff will help you make the right decisions at the right time. That's Alamo Appliance, 817-531-2701. Once again, that's Alamo Appliance, 817-531-2701. Fort Worth Lighting, serving the building professional in Parker Wise, Palo Pinto, and surrounding counties. Services include plan takeoff, site walkthrough, and delivery. For an appointment with a Fort Worth Lighting Consultant, the number is 817-597-6320, or the website is fortworthlighting.com. Again, it's 817-597-6320 for Fort Worth Lighting. I'm Jean Gibson, and I love Weatherford, and I'm proud to offer Zion Hill Estates. Zion Hill Estates is a country development five minutes from the center of Weatherford, grocery stores, hospitals, banks, department stores, and in the Peaster School District. One-acre lot minimums gives you space to spread your arms and enjoy country living. Two or more acres will give you space for your horse or your goats. Gibson Home Builders, 682-429-2116, will build you the home of your dreams in Zion Hill Estates. 
Go north of the square to 920, left on Zion Hill Road for 2.4 miles to Zion Hill Estates. We'd like to show you the land and an energy-efficient model home. The number is 682-429-2116. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, 2401 Zion Hill Road, Weatherford, Texas, 682-429-2116. We specialize in homes to suit each and every individual that expects special attention. We help design, finance, and close on every home we build. We use green building techniques in all of our homes. You can contact Jim at masterbuildershow.com. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, Weatherford, 682-429-2116. Welcome back to the Master Builder Show. I'm your host, Jim Gibson. Today's show is sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. My guest today is Tim Rowe with Alamo Electrical Contracting Services and my wife, Jean Gibson, Vice President of Gibson Home Builders Incorporated. We are talking about structured wiring and structured wiring, simply meaning running your all your low-voltage wiring, which handles all your TV, your phones, your whatever you want to control in A your house. A house-controlling your, system. A house-controlling system. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and you can control your house uh, the way they're setting it up now. Just in about anywhere in the world, you can go go and if you go oh, on yeah. vacation and want it cool down, by the time you get back, you just go in on your computer, type in whatever temperature you want, and bring it to that temperature. So it, I mean, they're getting you know pretty soon. Uh, just about all new homes. I mean, all your upper end homes and stuff will have that in there. Okay, Tim, we were talking about CAD 5. and uh, CAD My house is wired for CAD 5 and CAT, CAT 5, CAT. CAT 5. And I've got a new HD TV, and you're telling me that's all external to the wiring. So nothing, the wiring in the house doesn't have to change. Not if uh, you've got RG6. No, not if you have a coax cable, the RG6. Um, uh, the the uh, HD TV, uh, you're going to need to send the signal uh, from a receiver. Uh, uh, or some other source to your HD TV, uh, and the the receiver will receive its signal if it's broadcast uh, signal uh, via the RG6 or the coax cable, and then uh, from the receiver, which is your source to your TV, you're going to have to have a patch cord, and that patch cord is uh, typically these days we're using HDMI cable. <laughs> Um, the main reason we're using HDMI cable uh, is due to the fact that it's compact. Uh, but uh, we also will use RGB cables with uh, with uh, with audio cables uh, incorporated, um, depending on the application. Um, HDMI just makes it quicker and simpler. Um, uh, is this one cable now? Where it's one cable that incorporates all of the all of the cables all the, in all the other wires that we had all stuck all over the place on the back of the receivers. It, exactly. Yeah, they've got uh, you know they've got the most common form of cable right now is what they call a DVI cable, and DVI stands for. You have any idea? What digital DVI? video input. There you go. Uh, di- digital visual interface. I, I believe is the way it's going. But anyway, it it only handles the uh, video portion of it. So you've got to bring a separate cable in to, to handle your audio portion. So that's the reason they've got your on your inputs to your TV there. Normally they have like three. They've got uh, video, audio. In and, and out. In and out and all that. Well, the, the, the HDMI cable, which is the high-definition multimedia interface cable, it actually bundles all your voice, uh, your audio for your TV, and your video all in one cable. So it, so it eliminates, you know, having... Six or eight wires back there. If a house isn't wired for this, is that something that can be done after the fact? Yeah, uh, of course. It, it can be done after the fact. Uh, but almost, almost any new home is going to be wired for this. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're not uh, pre-wired with your coax cable then, and your uh, Cat5, you, you probably got uh, an issue with your builder. <laughs> well, I, I think pretty well standard with all, all builders now are putting in. Structured right. wiring just about in every house. I mean, you, you can't hardly well, We've got a town it. full of 100-year-old houses, too. And those people are going to have the same issues with getting a quality signal in. I was just wondering if there's a way that you can do that without, you know, the, the telephone wire running along the baseboard stapled in place. <laughs> God help us all. But we had, that's how it was done when you added a phone, right? Before there were computers, they would add well, that. That was it. The, the, the telephone guy was lazy. You know, so he, <laughs> didn't wanna, he didn't want to drop the wall. 
or it was an outside wall and it was fire blocked or some reason he couldn't. But uh, you still got uh, cable TV or coax cable run on the inside if they can't couldn't get it down the wall. And the only way you can get it in there is just bring it in there and hide it as best you can. Well, can't you go wireless on all this? I, oh, I've got go a question. I, my house is not wired for the HD and all, and I heard you talking about that earlier. Is that going to be more expensive for you to come in and redo everything, or is there adaptions or stuff like that for houses yeah. who don't have it like mine? Oh, how, how old is your house? Five years. Five years old. Uh, you're almost definitely going to have uh, the capability of feeding a HD signal into your home now. Okay. And and just uh, the only issue you're going to have is is patching from your receiver to uh, – to your to your HD TV, and in in that case, uh, uh, in most applications, what you want is you don't want to have uh, 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 wires showing. Uh, if you're going to hang a plasma TV on your wall or an LCD TV on your wall, you want to have those wires uh, concealed, and uh, uh, that's that's the only real issue you're going to have. Yeah, if you've got cable TV right now, or you've got satellite TV, I've got, I've got cable. Yeah, if you've got cable, you're already wired for it. Okay, uh, right, most all your cable. They, they were using RG40 or. 59, 59 at one time, but uh, now they're going to primarily pretty well standard. It's a multi-mode RG6, right? and that is your coax that they put in. And I guess they've been putting that RG6 in for 10, 15, 20 right. years. I mean, it's it's been going in for a long time. Well, but, are you? can you create off the his five-year-old wiring in his house, can you create a smart house off of that wiring? No. Yeah, I mean, you you've got to go in and actually wire for that. Yeah, you'll you, you'll have limited capabilities uh, with with that. Um, what you want to do, if, uh, it's preferable to go start prior to new construction with your plan to uh, to build a a smart home, mm-hmm. uh, quote unquote. And uh, what we do currently is we we are are uh, installers. We're certified listed dealers for HAI, which is Home Automation Inc. And um, uh, that's a Cat5 based system, and so uh, we pre-wire Cat5 to all the appropriate locations throughout a new home, and uh, we provide you with the ability to control your lighting, access your security, your audio, your is, video, your cameras, all from one source. Is this a a pre-packaged system, a closed system, proprietary system? Um, yeah, it's a proprietary system, but it can interface with other systems as well. So, uh, so I it, can go to Radio Shack and add uh, something or other to this system. Well, uh, it, there, it's it's not as simple as going to Radio Shack and plugging something else in. But uh, 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 we can interface uh, a multimedia computer system to our home automation system. Uh, uh, you can, uh, as Jim stated a moment ago, you can be anywhere in the world mm-hmm. as long as you have Internet access and control uh, your HVAC uh, from another computer system, uh, you can access your cameras. You can play back uh, recordings from your cameras on your built-in DVR, which we install in, in your actual structure wiring low voltage panel. Um, you can uh, see event logs. You can leave messages for for your children if your children are at home. Uh, it's it's the capabilities are almost endless. It's- well, my concern is I I I'm kind of like I like computers and I like technology. Um, that it's such a rapid change that I I don't see any point in doing what is needed for today. I I believe very strongly that you have to do for for what for what is needed five years, ten years from now, which will be huge. Well, that's, so that's, how that's, long that's... a life your structural wiring is done during new construction? This is there's obviously is this is very expensive to do. Well, it varies. It depends on what you're looking for. Uh, I want a, sm- a smart house is what I had read about with all these capabilities, so that I can s- sit with my iPhone right. and I can turn on the lights and I can check for messages. I can adjust the temperature in the house. I can do all the other whiz bang stuff. Well, what turn the, on the what the structure wiring is doing is what you're trying to do is put in all the wire that's going to be needed from for here, now, present, and for the future. They've got several wiring techniques, and some of the uh, packages on the structured wiring are called, oh, well, they've got one called the 2 plus 2 plus 2 structure, and what they're doing, they're putting in two coax, two cat fives, and two fiber optic cables. So when they do, uh, right now, they bring fiber to the home in, in certain areas, uh, and what they do, they convert it to a, a signal that's trans- 
transported over your Cat 5s to different locations. And then, of course, uh, it, it comes back to your whatever your control panel is and do patch panels and, and fed off to other locations. But, but the main purpose of structured wiring is to wire for the future. You're trying to put in whatever you think you're going to need, and that's the reason. Yeah, it's, it's tough to be prophetic in a computer world. Well, yeah, technology changes so fast. Uh, yeah, the best idea is to, to – uh, most of the new systems are, are going to be Cat5-based. Uh, Cat5e, which is the enhanced, which basically means they're capable of transmitting more data than the previous just Cat5 system. Um, and if you, it's it's not expensive at all to pre-wire for a Cat5 location. And so if you want to if you want to increase your capabilities later on down the road, you have the ability to install a basic system now mm-hmm. um, uh, for a reasonable cost. Um, and then down the road, you have the ability to expand it. And if you have the wiring already in the walls, you don't have to worry about coming in after the fact and dealing with sheetrock and insulation and that type of stuff. So. And um, you run this when you're running the electrical. It's effectively exactly. in the same place. Exactly. It's not different. Is it different men? It's, or is an electrician doing it, this? It, uh, in, in our case, uh-huh. uh, our, our men are cross-trained. They're capable of doing both. But they they have uh, previous they, – they've got a lot of experience. Um, uh, most crews will be either low voltage or, or line voltage. Oh, okay. uh, our, our men are capable of doing both. Yeah, the, that and that's I think one of the main reasons I've kind of picked you all up because you can go in there and just knock it out in a few days. And uh, hmm. like I said, when they bring the the fiber optics in now to the houses, they uh, <coughs> excuse me, they uh, they convert it to Ethernet solutions. And, and so most houses we have now that are running networking in their house are running mm-hmm. Ethernet type. It's a uh, ten base T or a hundred base T type format. And, and Ethernet's well, an old system. Yeah, it's an old system, yeah. but it's still pretty. It, it's a high-speed system. How much of this internal wiring can be replaced by putting in a wireless hub? Well, um, a wireless hub. Uh, that, that's one of actually the things that we pre-wire for is a wireless uh, router. And mm-hmm. um, uh, there's different options. You can have a set-top wireless router. Typically, what we install is a, a ceiling-mounted wireless router, which looks kind of like a, a smoother version of a smoke detector. Yeah. Um, and well, you it, see them in hospitals to boost signals. Right, and it gives a little bit greater range. Mm-hmm. And you have the capability of accessing your data for computer systems, etc. Uh, but it, for for um, controlling your lighting or your HVAC or that type of stuff, um, it's actually simpler um, and more reliable to have it uh, uh, a wired solution. Uh, so you're not dealing with a different digital signal to each individual uh, interface. And I don't know, if, uh, you know, if you start tinkering around with your with your uh, your frequencies on mm-hmm. your uh, on your uh, a router. Yeah. Um, oftentimes, you'll notice that you're that you're losing your signal, or or if you if you have issues with a firewall, um, and when you when you look at the possibility of losing that uh, capability temporarily, even with your lighting, uh, or with your uh, with your HVAC or your alarm system, it's a whole lot better just to have it wired, mm-hmm. and it's more not ex- secure. Yeah, and it's not expensive. Yeah, the, okay. hey, I'm sorry, but one more quick thought right. is: is high definition television capable of being wireless? Uh, right. They're moving towards that in the future, um, and actually, uh, uh, at this point, we haven't. I don't have any personal experience with wireless HD TV. But you mean it exists? Uh, no. Uh, uh, oh. But but they're moving towards that in the future. All right, the HDMI, you know, actually, uh, the high, HDMI, the High Definition Multimedia Interface that we've been talking about, it's a type of wiring that bundles all oh, okay. the capabilities together. Okay. It was it came out in uh, 2002, and that was HDMI version 1. And they, by the end of 2003, they've got, uh, they've probably got 100 million, uh, I guess, 100 million enabled devices that can be used on the uh, HDMI type. Format. So all that James well, Bond stuff yeah, is real, huh? <laughs> I well, you see so much in movies with all the the super whiz bang and you know pushing buttons, and the blinds come down and you push a button. They're at a control panel. Well, what they did on this thing when they invented the HDMI cable, they had standards, and it was founding by the, the leading manufacturers that are around the world, and, and uh, such as Hitachi, Panasonic, Philips, Sony, Toshiba, Thomson, you know, just about all your large manufacturers. They got together and actually 
design this cable to fit. So it's an industry standard. It's kind of like uh, everybody uses the same type of cable. Mm-hmm. Every time, you know, and, and so, so you can move from house to house and take your systems with you? Is yes, that, it, 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 exactly. Uh, the only limitations with HDMI is, is uh, the distance of the run, uh, the distance of the wire, and typically you don't want to exceed 45 feet. Because? Uh, well, you, Signal you, degradation. Yes. Which means that you're, it, it, has, it has distance uh, limits. That's the reason in uh, your large corporations and stuff, they, they, they've gone more either they stay with the Cat5 type format or they go to a uh, fiber optic format. Because if you've got some of these buildings, you might be a thousand, two thousand foot long, mm-hmm. and either you're going to have to have repeaters in there to regenerate the signal, or right now, like I said, it, it, you've got resistance in wire, and, and resistance. The longer the wire, the higher the resistance, so you're going to degrade the signal. Uh, Tim, you got anything? Yeah, well, in, in 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 most residential applications, when it comes to optical uh, uh, wiring, uh, you're you're not going to really need your optical wiring of fiber optics as, at this point. And the reason for that is because uh, uh, the fiber optics are typically used in a subdivision um, or actually in a commercial application where your your uh, uh, internet feed is going to be uh, a, a great distance from your from your from your actual structure and in most subdivisions you don't have an issue with we, that we've got to take another break we'll be back here in just a couple of minutes did you know that some of the best home builders in the entire nation are right here in parker county hello everyone this is lynn bearden president of first national bank of weatherford our lenders believe your family deserves the best when it comes to your dream home First National Bank is proud to support the Master Builder Show on QXFM. First National Bank in Weatherford has been building homes in Parker County since 1880. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Are you having a construction-related issue? Do you need a construction attorney? If so, you may call the law firm of Kelly M. Davis and Associates. Kelly's family background in the construction industry has led to her focus in construction litigation with over nine years of experience practicing construction law in and around the metro area. For more information, you may visit www.kmdalegal.com or you may call 972-434-8009. That's 972-434-8009. Fort Worth Lighting, serving the building professional in Parker Wise, Palo Pinto, and surrounding counties. Services include plan takeoff, site walkthrough, and delivery. For an appointment with a Fort Worth Lighting consultant, the number is 817-597-6320, or the website is fortworthlighting.com. Again, it's 817-597-6320 for Fort Worth Lighting. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, 2401 Zion Hill Road, Weatherford, Texas, 682-429-2116. We specialize in homes to suit each and every individual that expects special attention. We help design, finance, and close on every home we build. We use green building techniques in all of our homes. You can contact Jim at masterbuildershow.com. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, Weatherford, 682-429-2116. Welcome back to the Master Builder Show. I am your host, Jim Gibson. Today's show is sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. My guests today are Tim Rowe with Alamo Electrical Contracting Services and Gene Gibson with Gibson yeah. Home Builders Incorporated. You notice how he remembers every time I, now? I remember you anyway. <laughs> uh, sometimes I forget who my guest is, but that's you know that's normal for me. I'm getting senile in my old age. Anyway, we're talking about structured wiring, and we were going to talk about uh, I guess all the different types of wiring that y'all are involved in, and you're actually electrical contractors also. Yes, sir. And what has changed over the past uh, several years as far as electrical uh, goes, as far as your code requirements? Uh, I know they came up with the uh, ground fault. Uh, arc, circ- fault circuits. arc fault circuits in all the bedrooms. And, right. And that's been in existence for the last four or five years. What's that? Uh, they've got uh, all your... Bedrooms are arc fault protected. If, if 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 there's any type of arc or spark, it kicks the breaker and, and kills the, all the outlets in the room. Yeah, in most cases, smoke detectors are almost arc fault uh, are are uh, also arc fault protected. And in the future, 
they're uh, the the code is moving towards arc fault protecting pretty much any opening uh, that's a 120 volt outlet. Right. Um, uh, if it's 240 volt, then that's a different story. But uh, they haven't moved to that standard yet. Um, uh, arc fault protection just basically means that if there's an arc, uh, 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 electrical arc at any uh, outlet in the home, whether it's a, a lighting fixture or a plug. You mean if it sparks? Uh, yes. Draws, uh, yeah, it draws an arc from the hot side to the ground. If it, if it, so, if, well. Other we, than a baby poking something in there, what would be the reason for that? A nail going through the wall and hitting uh, the electrical wiring. Like somebody's hanging a picture or something like that. Oh, and just I move them around all the time. To, yeah, I know. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it's just another safety precaution. But the, but the problem is with it, uh, they're putting in, uh, going to require it, I guess, in every room that has some kind of, right now it's required in any kind of room that's got storage. Uh, a clo- With a closet. With, so it's any room with a closet right now. But if they... What they're going to do in the new code or the latest code, they're talking about putting it in every room. Well, the problem is these things cost how they're, much more than a standard breaker? Oh, they're about five to six times the cost of a standard breaker. So, well, all well how sudden, much is this? What are we talking about? What's five or six times of what? Uh, well, a, a, a typical single pole breaker will be anywhere between three dollars and eight dollars a piece, and yeah. and the uh, the arc fault breakers are between twenty nine and and thirty nine dollars a piece. So and how many do you normally put in a house? It depends on the size of the house. What's a standard breaker though? The standard two thousand square well, foot house. I mean, well, ballparks uh, have some a, concept. A, a, of what we're a talking typical about. Uh, two thousand square foot house is going to have at least a forty circuit panel, which means you're going to have at least forty breaker locations. Forty you know? times uh-huh. fifteen. Now figure that out. Instead of forty times three, it's forty times fifteen. Did you listen to or, or, or Brett earlier today when he was trying to do math and screwed it up? I'm not doing math on the air. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, uh, so you know, not only is diesel going up, uh, the uh, mm. the rough end, electrical rough end, are actually top out uh, on this one is going to be or trim out. When, when exactly actually, trim out when they put the breakers in there uh, is going to go up five times. Yeah. Well, not not the not the overall cost of the trim out, but as far as that one component, right. yeah, it's it's five times, uh, uh, approximately five times higher. But, in, but will the regular old breakers be still available so that a man who's doing his own electrical work needs to change a breaker, <laughs> he can still go buy it, or are they going to take the others off the market? No, those are the other breakers will will still be available. But in order to pass inspection, you're going to need a arc right. fault breaker. In those so we're locations. talking about just new construction, not old stuff. You can still in an older house, you can still put in the other kind. Yeah, unless you're unless you're uh, uh, going to require inspection. Um, okay. Yeah, they're good. I mean, all all new construction, all probably like if you did a remodel or. or mm-hmm. Such as that, then then you'd be required to follow all codes, and you're going to, have to follow all codes no matter where you are in the state of Texas. Uh, so, uh, you know, you just don't go stick a, something in there and not follow code. When you talk about basic structural, basic, no, I have to get the words right, but the basic structured wiring and electrical wiring for a house, what's the basic? We were talking about that earlier. Yeah. Uh, okay. What's, but what's base? What is the Pretty what low can base I... right now is two coax and two RG fives in every room. Plus, how many outlets in every room? Well, Electricity, because you're doing both e- electrical outlets. But you're going to have electrical outlets too. They don't. They don't run through this power panel though, where the uh, breakers the, are. The outlets do, but the low voltage does not. Okay, so that's an the low voltage is either in, in, uh, just going to uh, come up to one, depending on the size of the house and what you have as far as the uh-huh. low voltage. It'll, you'll either have a, a D mark. Uh, where the low voltage, low voltage is stubbed out at, or if you're going to have an automation system, you're going to have a low voltage panel, uh, or multiple low voltage panels. And in, in in our cases, uh, in our case, we typically have multiple low voltage panels installed in a home, um, and uh, that will uh, facilitate the incorporation of the automation system for all the different components that need to be installed in a low voltage panel to make all this stuff work. As far as the automation with the lighting and the and the audio and the video. What's it look like on the outside of the house? You got all this. You don't see. It. You don't stuff. see anything. You don't see anything. And you just see just one, little, one, 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 one box where you see a satellite dish. We we pre-wire for a, a satellite dish location, and we pre-wire to a uh, which call what's called a D mark, which is the location mm-hmm. where the utility company feeds their uh, a phone or or TV signal input through. To see the same okay. thing that you see right now. I mean, you're not changing okay. everything so we're doing. Even though everything's getting smarter, faster. Yeah. Whiz bang, 
we don't have 40 different wires coming into the house. Right. Now, one, one thing we do suggest is that uh, if uh, you're going to have a, uh, an automation system, that your low-voltage uh, equipment, your panel, mm-hmm. uh, uh, or your structure box will, uh, uh, would be installed inside an air-conditioned space. Uh, you want to avoid uh, attic locations, if at all possible, uh, due to the temperature fluctuations. If all you're dealing with is phones and TVs, it's not an issue. But if you're going to be dealing with uh, 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 computer systems, in essence, installed in your low-voltage panel, you're going to not want, want them installed in your attics We've because of the temperature fluctuations. We've got to take another break. We'll be back here in just a few minutes. Did you know that some of the best home builders in the entire nation are right here in Parker County? Hello, everyone. This is Lynn Bearden, president of First National Bank of Weatherford. Our lenders believe your family deserves the best when it comes to your dream home. First National Bank is proud to support the Master Builder Show on QXFM. First National Bank in Weatherford has been building homes in Parker County since 1880. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Are you having a construction-related issue? Do you need a construction attorney? If so, you may call the law firm of Kelly M. Davis & Associates. Kelly's background in the construction industry has led to her focus in construction litigation. With over nine years of experience practicing construction law in and around the metro area, for more information, you may visit www.kmdalegal.com or you may call 972-434-8009. That's 972-434-8009. I'm Jean Gibson, and I love Weatherford, and I'm proud to offer Zion Hill Estates. Zion Hill Estates is a country development five minutes from the center of Weatherford, grocery stores, hospitals, banks, department stores, and in the Peaster School District. One-acre lot minimums gives you space to spread your arms and enjoy country living. Two or more acres will give you space for your horse or your goats. Gibson Home Builders, 682-429-2116, will build you the home of your dreams in Zion Hill Estates. Go north of the square to 920, left on Zion Hill Road for 2.4 miles to Zion Hill Estates. We'd like to show you the land and an energy-efficient model home. The number is 682-429-2116. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, 2401 Zion Hill Road, Weatherford, Texas, 682-429-2116. We specialize in homes to suit each and every individual that expects special attention. We help design, finance, and close on every home we build. We use green building techniques in all of our homes. You can contact Jim at masterbuildershow.com. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, Weatherford, 682-429-2116. Welcome back to the Master Builder Show. I am your host, Jim Gibson. Today's show is sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. My guest today is Tim Rowe, and he is with Alamo Electrical Contracting Services, and Jean Gibson, my wife, with Gibson Home Builders. Anyway, we're talking about structured wiring, and, and basically we're going to be here in the latter part, we're talking about just wiring in general. Uh, there are certain, uh, back in, I guess, 30, 40, Years ago, how many outlets you put in a in a bedroom? They say one, two. Uh, yeah, it, it, that's that's not even uh, uh, considerable. It's not even an issue at this point. There, there's, we have to follow code at this point. Right. So right now you've got a, you've got pretty well electrical outlet about every eight feet or so, don't you? Well, uh, on average, uh, you have to have an outlet, electrical outlet within six feet of any any uh, door opening, and then within another twelve feet from from outlet to outlet. And so, on average, you're looking at about every eight feet, right? Yeah, it's it's mm-hmm. amazing. Uh, and and like I said, when they when they introduced this new code that, that puts in arc fault interrupters in every room, uh, the price of copper is already sky high, right? And we're putting what about a mile of copper in every house now? Wow. Or more. Yeah, a lot of a lot of copper. Yeah, we're putting a lot, so yeah. people don't realize how much it actually costs when you go in and actually rough in a house. You've got uh, like I said, about a mile of wire, and that's just in the uh, uh, 
electrical portion of it. And you that's got, on a small home. That's on a small home, and, and you've got certain code requirements as to the the gauge of the wire that you've got to put in. I went out and bought I can't I thought it was I can't remember eight or something like it R eight, and it was like one hundred and eighty five dollars for one hundred and fifty foot or something like that. Right. I mean, it was incredible, and you go through a roll. Uh, um, in immediately, uh, you know. Is there the an alternative to copper? Is anybody not, not really? On it? No? no, not really. Uh, they're, 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 in some municipalities, they'll allow you to use aluminum, but we, we won't, we won't do that. And well, why, what's the difference? Well, they why had a lot of houses burned down uh, because aluminum wiring. It's, it's against code right now to use any aluminum wiring in any residential structure. Now you can do it on your your feed, like bringing in from the power company. You can bring in aluminum. But what they had uh, happening was uh, all your your electrical outlets themselves or your appliances you stick on the end of the wire there, they were uh, brass, and they had an oxidation uh, set up, and, and they would get loose, and they would arc, and they would start a fire. And so that's the reason that uh, they pretty well banned all that. You've still got some old aluminum wiring and, and some older structures, but most of them need to be replaced. And, and if you don't, you need to go around and check all your connections fairly often because they do get loose. And you can check you can check for oxidation. They make a compound it's uh, uh anti oxidation compound, Nolox, uh to uh to prevent the oxidation between two uh differing Just metals. Mm-hmm. metals. But uh okay Tim, uh we've only got about four or five minutes left. You wanna tell us how to how to reach you if I want to call you for your services? Sure. Uh, well, um, uh, uh, my name's Tim Rohn with Alamo Electrical Contracting Services. Uh, our phone number is 817-249-4964. Our fax number is 817-249-4984. Uh, you can email us at alamoelectrical at yahoo.com. Um, and our address is 9508 Camp Bowie West in Fort Worth, Texas, 76116. Um, Do you have a website? Uh, no, uh, at this point we don't have a website, but uh, we're we're uh, we're investigating that. But as far as uh, 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 our capabilities, we can we can pretty much uh, uh, handle any uh, type of residential or commercial uh, job that that uh, you need us to take care of. And uh, we're we're trained in the in the home automation. We're trained in commercial, and we're trained in residential. And uh, y'all yeah, have got some big automation systems going in some pretty fairly large houses here, don't you? Yes, sir. Pretty yes, quick. sir. Actually, we're we're uh, in the process of working on a thirteen thousand square foot residential, wow. and uh, uh, and we've completed some pretty pretty uh, pretty hefty systems, and we're we're proud of that aspect uh, of our of our capability because it's uh it's relatively unique in the in the in the area. And what are the what are the refinements in a 13,000 square foot house for their systems what kind of things are is most commonly added computers well, everybody does well yeah you you you're you're looking at a multimedia center computer system you're looking at a projection TVs uh uh in uh, 1080p uh you're looking at uh, uh the lighting controls and uh the ability to access your your automation system remotely um and there's other lots of other bells and whistles you can incorporate. But uh, one of the things that we're seeing that our customers really like to have in their home is the ability to view the uh, the perimeter of their of their mm-hmm. house. Especially if you have children, right. you want the ability to watch your swimming pool area if you have a swimming pool out back. And and uh, with our touch screens that are flush mounted in the walls, you can access that or you can view it on your TV or however you want to do it. And you can actually. Uh, Go into your your computer and monitor your refrigerator, your freezer. Make sure that the power's still on to them. And uh, you know, if you got a large freezer with it's full of meat, you don't. I mean, there's 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 so many capabilities out there now to monitoring just about everything that's that's electrical or uh, you know doing things with cameras and all that. But it's uh, it's going to be the big 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 thing is a smart house now coming up because you can it's actually. Uh, you can conserve energy when you're away from home. Cut your air conditioning system, uh, either set it on 80 and then dial into the computer and, and bring it down to 70 or 68 or whatever you want to set it at uh, yeah, an hour you, before you get home. Yeah, and you can automate your um, oven as well, was one of the things I heard about. So right. You, turn, you, you can turn dinner on before you ever get there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And one of the advantages we have at, at, at Alamo is that. Um, it, 
if 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 you're going to have a home automation installer and you're going to have an electrician on on site, it's real important that they communicate effectively with each other. In our case, we're we're one and the same. And our our master electrician, Mike Marquez, Miguel Marquez, he's a he's a top notch electrician uh, with knowledge in the automation systems and with uh, everything electrical. Uh, uh, commercial, residential, etc. So uh, we have a uh, the capability of of handling that without uh, having too many hiccups. All right, it looks like we're running out of time again this week. And uh, tell us about next week. Tell us what about next week. We're going to have Kelly M. Davis on here with Kelly M. Davis, attorneys at law. She was, uh, I guess, one of my attorneys back years ago. She actually set up our corporation, but she'll be here next Tuesday. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Y'all have a good week. Mm-hmm.